Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. How are you all doing? Today we're going to be talking all about book series. So I hardly ever read series. I much prefer to read standalones. You've probably gathered that if you've watched my channel before. And I think a large reason for that is because the books I prefer to read, literary fiction generally, don't tend to come in a series format. But even aside from that, there is something about book series that I kind of struggle with. Something has to be really good for me to want to read a whole series of it. Like, there are so many amazing books out there. If you want me to read four or five in the same series, then you've got to be doing something amazing. I also just want a book to be perfect on its own. Just one knockout book that's what I want. That being said, there are some series that I've read in the past and absolutely loved, and there are some series that I've started reading in the past year or so. So I thought I would just sit down and talk to you today about all of the book series that I've started relatively recently and tell you about which ones I won't be carrying on with and which ones I will be carrying on with which is rare. So let's start with the ones that I won't be continuing on with. So the first book that I'm going to be talking about is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. A bit of a controversial one to start off with. This is the first book in a trilogy of books, I believe, that are based off of Russian fairy tales. So this book is very whimsical and very magical. It has a gorgeous wintry setting and it has a subversive, headstrong female protagonist who is fab. This book has a lot of really great ingredients and it is pretty gorgeous. I read this the Christmas before last, I think, and it was the perfect time to read it for me. Reading it at Christmas time was just lovely. I got really swept up into it and I really enjoyed my reading experience. But I'm just not bothered about it now. Once Christmas passed, I have felt no desire to return to it at all. The characters didn't blow me away. I didn't feel particularly connected to them. The writing isn't anything special. I just don't think there's anything particularly excellent about this book. So I enjoyed this while I read it at the time, but I won't be continuing on with the rest of the series. The next book that I'm going to be talking about is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stevarta. This is another very well-loved series here on Booktube, probably one of the most well-loved that I've seen, I would say. This is the first in a YA fantasy series that follows our protagonist called Blue, whose family can see the spirits of dead people, and Blue is also told that the first boy that she kisses will die. The book also follows a group of boys called the Raven Boys who go to a local private school. Blue and her new friends end up getting tangled into some kind of mystery and there's intrigue and suspense and there's romance. Like with the last one, I really enjoyed this book while I read it. I read it at the perfect time. I think I read it around Halloween last year when I was fancying something a bit darker, something really fun and fast paced, something I could just tell through. But again, I don't think this book is particularly impressive, basically at all. The characters are by far the best aspect of this book for me. While the book is kind of driven by the storyline and the mystery that's going on, the characters are very central to this book. They're all very distinct from one another and very fun. But the rest of it wasn't great. I didn't really feel like there was much substance to it, and I'm sure the hype killed it for me a bit. Whatever the reason, this was fun for me to read when I read it, but I think I'll leave it there. The next book is one that makes my boyfriend Cameron very, very sad, and that is Dune by Frank Herbert. This is one of Cameron's favourite ever novels. It is a classic sci-fi novel that is set in the far future in an interstellar empire. Different planets are ruled by different noble houses, and in this novel we get to see the Atreides family move to a planet called Arrakis and take control. This is the first novel in a large series of books that is set in this world, and the scope for these books is huge. There is so much going on in this novel, and I really did appreciate that while I was reading it. The world that Frank Herbert builds is just vast. It's so epic and it has so many intricacies, and I think this novel did a really good job at laying the world building foundations for the rest of the series. But beyond this, I didn't like this book. The writing didn't sit with me well, the characters weren't great, our protagonist is 15 year old Paul who is the heir to the Atreides throne, and there was so much scope for really good character development in this novel that just wasn't utilised, and that really frustrated me. I like my characters to be very well crafted. Basically, the strengths of this novel just aren't where my interests lie. 
way. I'm really glad I read it both for Cameron's sake and just so that I've read a classic sci-fi novel. I get what people are on about now when they talk about this book but it isn't for me. And the final series that I'm going to be talking about today that I won't be continuing on with I don't actually have here with me. I think I've either misplaced the book or already gotten rid of it, I don't know, and that is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. This is the first book in a children's series that is set in fairyland. I read this book when I was in my third year of uni when I was incredibly stressed and I really wanted to read something really easy and fun and light and this book was all of those things. This book contains themes of adventure and friendship, there's a really fun eclectic mix of characters in there and there's some really nice moral messages dotted throughout as well. This book gave me the perfect escape from crazy uni life, I really needed it at the time but I didn't love it so much in its own right. It's not particularly unique, it's not mind-blowing in any way and Honestly, I just feel absolutely no desire to continue on with the series. I think I may have had lipstick on my teeth this whole time. Fuck my life. So now we're going to move on to the series that I will be continuing on with, the good stuff. So the first one is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. This is the first in a trilogy of historical novels that focuses on the life of Thomas Cromwell in the 1500s. Thomas Cromwell started life as the son of a poor blacksmith until he worked his way up to being one of the most powerful men in all of England when he became the most influential of King Henry VIII's courtiers. I read this novel last summer around the time that I went to the Man Book of 50 festival in London and I actually saw Hilary Mantel speak there. By the way, that was amazing. She's absolutely mad, but I love her. <laughs> this novel is amazing. It is epic in basically every single way. The incredible amount of time and research and care that went into this novel is apparent. It feels very well informed while you're reading and I learned a lot. The characters couldn't feel more real. They are so intricate and so perceptively drawn and the storyline is full of drama and intrigue and brutality and opulence. This book provided one of the most rich and immersive reading experiences I will probably ever have. It's just on a whole new level to the majority of other books out there. It blew me away. Of course I will be continuing on with this trilogy. I'm actually yet to read the second book because I needed a bit of a break after reading this one. It's really really dense <laughs> but it's actually just been announced that the third book in the trilogy is coming out spring next year which is so exciting. A lot of reading of this trilogy will be happening for me in the foreseeable future, I just need to get myself ready. The next book that I'm going to talk about won't come as any surprise to any of you I don't think and that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the first book in the Kingkiller Chronicles series which is a epic high fantasy trilogy and it's one of the best series I have ever read. This book and the trilogy as a whole is mainly an autobiography of our protagonist Kvothe who when he was younger attended the university, a renowned school of magic and he became very powerful and well known and went on lots of adventures. But nowadays Kvothe is living his life as a subdued innkeeper going by a different name and we don't know why. The world in this trilogy is amazing. It contains a mix of traditional fantasy elements and also modern day living and it is so fully fleshed out. This trilogy contains some of the best world building I have ever read. I was so convinced by this world while I read this book. The magic system in this trilogy is also so good. It's very unique and almost academic. It includes a lot of scientific principles and I loved reading about it. It's so unique and clever. And the writing in here is gorgeous as well. Patrick Rothfuss just ties all of these things together so well to tell the best story. So I've read the first two books in this trilogy and myself and my flatmates are eagerly anticipating the third in the trilogy whenever Rothfuss decides to write it. And the final book that I'm going to be talking about I don't have here with me because I've lent it to somebody I think I'm always <laughs> lending this book out to people. And that is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alia Sayens. If you've watched my channel for a while now you will probably know that I love this book. It's my favourite ever YA novel that I've read and one of my favourite books of all time, but you may be surprised to hear that it is the first in a series. 
I was definitely surprised when I found out. So this novel follows two teenage boys, Aristotle and Dante, who become best friends over the course of a summer, and throughout the novel we get to witness their relationship and see the ways they develop as individuals. This novel explores themes of growing up and finding yourselves and the relationships we hold and self-identity and all of the things that constitute your identity. And it is so good. And it turns out that there is another book due to come out to follow this book at some undetermined time. I'm not sure if this is going to be a duology or a trilogy or a series. All I know is that there is going to be a number two at some point and that makes me very excited and scared. I love this book as it is. It is perfect as it is. So it will be really interesting to see where Benjamin Elias Sayens takes the story from here. I can't really picture it to be honest, but of course I will have to read it and just hope that it lives up to this one. So those are all the series that I will and won't be continuing on with. As you can probably tell, series aren't really my thing, but there are a few that I can get behind. I would love to talk to you all about series down below in the comments and how you feel about them? Do you love series? Do you prefer them to standalones? I know a lot of people do so I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on that. Also please recommend to me some of your favourite series that you think I'd really really like. That would be fun. Thank you so so much for watching. I really hope you all enjoyed this video and just the fact that I'm uploading more. Go me. I will hopefully see you all very very soon. Bye.